Welcome to Backstage with Kennedy This little show will be your remedy From Toronto spanning across the sea Cool people, lots of laughs This is your favorite podcast Hello and welcome. My name is Kennedy from the Backstage with Kennedy podcast. I got a familiar guest today, um, Neil Page. Um, he's also in the band Panic Problem, but he just started up a podcast uh, called Crash Tour, Ra- uh, Crash Tour Show. And honestly, um, I'm really excited to hear this because one thing I found about Neil after talking to him the first time was uh, Neil loves to talk. Neil loves to talk. <laughs> and uh, he's got some interesting stories. So I think this is a really good opportunity for him uh, to kind of give him an outlet for that as well. Um, and some of the guests I'm hearing on this are, are wicked. I mean, he's starting off with a banger right off the bat. So uh, we'll dive into that a little bit more in the uh, throughout this podcast. But uh, Neil, how you doing, bro? What's new with you, man? Hey, man. Thank you for having me back. I'm stoked to be here. And uh, thank you for seeing me again. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, you know, we're just... Yeah, we're still in it, huh? <laughs> we're yeah. still in it, man. Yeah. Oh, God. Dude, just... I, I I was looking at Skype at like um like your um personal um like Skype and it said uh last spoke to over a year ago and I'm like, Oh my god, this it's is brutal, crazy. man. Because we we spoke like right at the beginning. Yeah, right at the, the start of this whole nonsense. <laughs> and it's like, you know, oh god. Hopefully this is the sign out to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. Until we're past all this nonsense, like I I refuse to count it as 2021. We're just in like we're like in overtime for 2020. Like like um, 2020 is just an OT. Like don't like everyone's like oh 20. I'm like nothing has changed. Like some yeah. things have changed. Some things have changed. But you know, ah boy, ah boy. I, uh, <laughs> so, so obviously Patrick's not here. He's, uh, he's yeah. not feeling the greatest. And, uh, as you said, he was stoked to be on the podcast. So uh, I do want to wish a, a quick recovery to Patrick. Hopefully it's nothing too serious. And yeah. Uh, get through yeah. It. yeah. So, I mean, you know, Pat, Pat Martin is, uh, my, my long time, long time friend and, uh, the co-host co-conspirator, um, of Crash Tour Show, which is uh, a spoken word kind of program that we ended up doing, I think, because we all missed touring and playing shows. Yeah. And, um, you know, as I'm sure, you know, you know, you know, with, with what you have going on as well, you know, what we all really get paid in is not money. It's actually just ridiculous stories that of which most of which we can't really ever share, uh, or we don't have this outlet to share it. And, uh, so Pat, um, he reached out to me. He's like, Hey, do you want to, you know, you want to do this? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. And, um, out of that, kind of came this idea to um do this spoken word show where basically we just sit down with friends of ours that are in various bands or um that are not in bands but they were either the um the merch person for a band or the tour manager for a band or a roadie for a band or whatever um Mm -hmm. and uh, we just hear about all the horror stories of touring, so it's never, it's never good news. Yeah, it's only it's only ever bad news and, and and like and regret and shame and sacrificing clothing and like you know uh, just the horrors of touring and how even though uh, all of that happens, we still oddly miss it. This weird abusive relationship that we're in with 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 our with our love of of self punishment, I guess. So. It's 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 funny you say that because like when people who are not musicians or you know they they look at that rock star road lifestyle 
they think of it like such a like oh. ridiculously beautiful thing like grand right yeah but it's there's... it's there's a lot of the opposite of that on tour <laughs> it's just a lot of like squirming in a vinyl chair in a vinyl yeah. bench seat in a van or a whatever and a, a lot of um a lot of unattractive genitalia and not like in and not like in like a sexual way like yeah. in like hey you're on tour and everyone played a, you know a stadium or an arena or you're like you know back in the day you're on the warp tour and everyone's taking like you know gang showers like it's like high school gym like everyone goes yeah. back to high school gym there's no there's nothing sexy there's no white tiger there's like you know there's no like you know there, there's none of that yeah. Like it does, it's not it's not real i mean like at least on on the level uh that we all existed uh, or you know currently exi- sort of you know exist in um you know if if you're really lucky you're staying at like a hotel that is like you know free of of vermin um <laughs> you know but most of the time not <laughs> and and um you know so like you know yeah, there's no. I think the big takeaway from the work, you know, from from the conversations we've had so far, there's no real like making it. It's more of like what you were able to escape from. Like, yeah. oh, I'm I'm doing this now, which means I don't have to do this anymore. So like, that's that's kind of been the big, the big takeaway from from the the conversations we've had. I feel that. So, so how did you and Patrick? Uh, you said you were long-term friends. How did you guys uh, get connected way back? Was it through like touring? So, all right. So this is this is this is a great story. So, so there was this um, there was this restaurant in Baltimore, um, long time ago. Okay. And it was a sushi restaurant, um. And I'm trying to remember where it. I mean, it was like in the heart of the city. Like it's it's right, just bam. Like you're you're in Baltimore for sure, and not like the downtown part where the tourists go. I'm talking like you're in the city. And there was this guy, uh, this friend of ours, um, named Mike Riley. Um, and Mike went on to do bands like. Um, you know, the spark looks like rain. And um, most most famously, he was in this really big hardcore band called Pulling Teeth. And at the time, uh, Mike, he's like maybe like one or two years older than me. Um, so, you know, we, we were all basically about the same age. But Mike, Mike would put on these um, hardcore punk shows in the second floor of this sushi restaurant, which was... <laughs> Really, just a from my vague memory, it was just kind of like an abandoned second floor. Like there was nothing, there was no like ambiance to this room. It was literally <laughs> like I think if I remember correctly, it was like two rooms. Like it was like it was like a row home. Like so it was like two rooms, you know, like yeah, room one and room two. And like room two was like where bands would like hang out and do the merch. And um, room one was like where all the the bands would play. And so Pat was in a band called Game Winner, and okay. I was in a band called Say Anything, and um, we would play there, and I met Pat um, at the sushi bar part of it, and we just kind of hit it off as friends, and he started doing bands really seriously, and I started doing bands really seriously, and... You know, just we've been friends for, you know, over 20 years. And um, it, it's just one of those things where, you know, sometimes you catch your buddy out on the road and sometimes your buddy catches you out on the road. And, you know, Pat's just been a lifelong friend of mine. And, and so, you know, not only is he, uh, you know, a personal friend of mine, but also Pat just has this amazing um he has this amazing knack for finding uh 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 the weird like like he's like a little magnet like just like 
you know, and I, I kind of feel, I kind of feel the same way, you know, like it's, you don't mean to, uh, find these people or these places or these things, but they, they seem to find you. And so, you know, over the 20 years, you know, Pat would come back from a tour and be like, you will not believe what happened to me, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and I would come back from one and he'd be like, you know, he'd be like, you know, is is that a is that a hickey or a puncture wound? I'm like, you will never believe it. You know, <laughs> it's both. You know, like, you know, like it's just the weirdest, just yeah. the most bizarre, uncomfortable things. And and Pat and I have a shared group of friends, so not only was it, um, you know, stories that would happen to me or to him, but it would also be stuff that we're like, you know, oh, did you hear what happened to that dude? No, what happened? Oh man, you know the. You know, the Gatorade bottle fell on him. Oh, no. You know, so it's just like, all you know, like all this yeah. ridiculous. There's, there's, there's always stories, for sure. Yeah, there's exactly. Always. Exactly. And I mean, like, you know, and, you know, it's it's funny because, you know, every every guest, you know, that we have on, uh, they definitely ask this the, the same question. They're like, so is this like a live thing or are we, re-, you know, I'm, I'm always like, no, it's heavily edited. Like, we no, <laughs> yeah. no, 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 no. So, I mean, like, we, we, um, we, we chop it way 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 down to just the crashing part where you crash with people after the show and it gets super bizarre so yeah uh, and, and i mean there's there's stuff that you can post online and some stuff you can't post online so it's always good to do to have that edited version absolutely and i mean like and not just from a and not just from a like you know uh, yeah everyone's so like cagey and weird about the alleged like cancel culture these days to which point i i just call it like good taste and manners i'm like well you, you know be a decent person and you yeah. won't cancel you know um but uh there's also stories that people have that um you, you know i mean every, everyone everyone has stories that are you kind of fall into a few buckets like one they have a story that's like you know it's a great story but you had to be there you know, yeah. um, yeah. or it's a story that's really interesting to them, but it doesn't make good for like storytelling. Um, yeah. there are stories that definitely probably should not be shared or told, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and, and then there's that fourth bucket, which is where, you know, there is a story that's out there that, um, maybe is, um, you know, it carries like a personal weight or it carries like a personal emotion with that person and they're not comfortable sharing it. And yep. um, Pat and I kind of have a rule and um, we 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 make a rule on what we do. And this is both on the, the video side of things and the um, the audio side of things that we never use names. So th- there are never th- like if, if a name gets mentioned. Yeah. Um, we delete it. Okay. Um, if there's a if there's a context, if there's like a particular context that's going to absolutely zero in on like someone or like a, a group of people or something like that, we kill that too. And and the reason why is because you know our rule is is that if if not everyone's laughing, then it isn't funny. Yeah. So you know. I mean, some of these stories, while it, like like the topic is funny, but there could be a person involved that that might not be funny if you Lived kind it. of um, you know expose them or 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 speak about them while they're not there, you know. So and and so it's kind of like yeah, you can you can talk, you know, you can you can make fun of like you know a band's house being messy, right? But you can't like. It's kind of lame to, you know, especially when a lot of these stories are like, you know, 10 or 15 years old. Yeah. It's kind of crummy to be like, hey, remember like four presidents ago when your house was gross? Ha ha. Specific person. Like that's not, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. no, I'm with it. Yeah. There's a lot of editing. There's a lot of stuff. (laughs) So. And, And I'm sure that's becoming something that. I mean, honestly, you either love it or hate it with the like the whole podcast um, business, like having these <laughs> these internet shows. Is um, you either love the editing process or you hate it. Uh, personally, I love this. I love talking like this. I hate the editing process. How has it been like a barrier for you? Was it pretty horrible. easy or horrible? Or- <laughs> horrible, 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 yeah. horrible, horrible. It took me. 
because I do I do a lot of the editing, and uh, it 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 is absolutely that that delayed the launch of the uh, show like three times. Yeah. Um, and so Melanie, if you're listening, I'm super sorry for those other two times. Uh, <laughs> cause it was, I mean, the thing is, is like, you know, like, what do you keep? What do you, what do you cut? Um, you know, do you hire it out? Do you get somebody from like Fiverr? Do you get someone who actually does audio, you know, engineering to do it? You know, do you, uh, you know, um, you, you know, what's the point of the episode? Sure. What's what's the what's the story you're trying to tell with the episode? Um, and again, back to like what we were just talking about, like, did you get everything? You know, did you did you kill what needed to be killed? So that way you're being respectful to the people who maybe are part of the story, but not part of the conversation. Yeah. You know, um, does the does the music sound cool does the you know this or that you know did you go on too long is this interesting is this boring you know and you can each one of these questions you go down this like rabbit hole or at least i did anyway for like you know i've you know like in in the band like i'm i'm actually not even around during mixing so i just don't even get involved in that like i just just like that's the that's the producer and um jeff and tom from panic problem like they they have more of a a thing there um i i do writing and then i i'm gone like i'm like i trust you (laughs) good job sounds like voices sounds like notes um with this it's like you know i'm just sitting there and i'm like "Ah, that one microphone sounds a little gamey uh gotta kind of get that little mm, mm, you know i swear to god like the 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 viral marketing right now for like people like ourselves where they're like i swear to god like i'll just be like on something like a knock i'll tell you what actually change let me let me refrain that i'll tell you the worst place ever for me the worst place ever instagram instagram rabbit hole instagram worst place in the world for me yeah. And my household finances. And I'll tell you why. Because that little algorithm has me so curated by all the crap that I do that I'll be like, I'll have like a long night here and I'm trying to like, you know, wrangle something on EQ or something like that. And I'll just, you know, pop on Instagram, you know, and all of a sudden, like, you know, I swear to God, like, like some, some advertisers like, hey, man, hey, having trouble with those vocals, buddy? Hey, for only seventy-five bucks, you too can make these vocals sound real nice. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, I'm like, so where do I put like, my I'm got, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh my god! Like, I, I think at one point, like, I even had like a phone call with like the LA Recording School, like as a result of Instagram. I'm dead serious. Like, it was like. So Neil, I couldn't help but notice you're thinking about becoming an audio engineer. I'm like, no, I'm just trying to do a stupid show about my friend's dumb stories. Like, <laughs> no. Anyway, that's that that's actually a true story. Like this guy, and you know, it was so weird. But yeah, Instagram knows me far too well. And for those of you, for those of you listening, uh, don't buy things online because they they catch you. They they learn. Yep. They they know they know your uh, your yeah. algorithm. They yeah. know they know my they know my color profile. They know like like oh he likes he they likes like, this. Yeah. It's about to be Stranger Things season. Bring up the synth wave. You know, I'm like, oh I'm like, fuck. Yeah, um, so, anyway. <laughs> so so one thing I, I did want to mention, um your first episode, um you dropped a guest. I'm not sure if I'm even a yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, first, no, no, we've been we've been on okay. for a week, so you're you're yeah. ready to rock. So your your first episode is with Chris from uh, Flatliners. Um, man, I'm a big Flatliners fan. Uh, that's really cool. I actually have like a, a skateboard um, that they released like one of fifty, which is like a Flatliners skateboard. Really? That's yeah. awesome. I love it, man. I'm I'm a big that's... fan. Um, Dude, Chris, that... is, Chris is sick. Chris Chris is a really 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 nice person. Um, that's the second time 
that I've met him. Uh, the first time I met him uh, was when Panic Problem was recording with uh, Pete. And yeah. he, uh, Chris, uh, also is a touring member of Hot Water Music. Yes, he is. And so Hot Water Music was in New Jersey. They were doing a weekend's worth of shows. And they were staying at the Katie's Great House, which in the basement of the Katie's Great House is where Pete does his recordings. So we're in the basement. Hot Water Music is upstairs. And it was the day after their show. And we were all kind of like, you know, chilling out on the porch. And, um, you know, out pops Chris Cresswell. And I was like, whoa. You know, I was like, whoa, Chris Cresswell, this rules. And I ended up, you know, um, Pat and Chris have been longtime friends. And so Pat was like, hey, I think I can get Chris for the show. Let's get him on. And I was like, yeah, please, let's get him on. And so um, we had Chris on for the show. And we got um, we got like three, three or four really awesome stories. And um, so the extended episodes – um, are on our Patreon, uh, so you can hear all four stories from Chris. And then the main story um, is about when they stayed with Pat and how uh, how that was a, a really uh, rough experience for the Flatliners staying with Pat. And so um, that's you know that's that's something that is pretty unique about um, both Pat and myself is where sometimes not only are we the hosts, we're also the villains of the story. Uh, so <laughs> there's, there's definitely going to, there's like a small Rolodex of people I'll, I'll have on where I'm like, all right, so th- this is uh, so I can make a public apology to you for that time. Like, you know, back at, you know, pre Obama uh, when I, <laughs> I, I did that thing and I'm sorry, you know? So, um, but yeah, yeah. So we had Chris on the show. It was amazing. It was really cool to hear about um, how the flats uh, came up in the Canadian punk scene, which is really cool. And yep. um, you know, it's it's interesting. Like, um, so I also run a very poorly. I, I run a Spotify playlist as well, and yep. it's just it's it's just a, a fun way to meet people uh and maybe try to like give someone like uh a leg up you know um without me like really leaving my home you know like i i'm just a person on spotify but like you know i i like to listen to new music and just from like working with you and working with melanie and you know chris and everybody i was like i'm gonna start like checking out the like the canadian punk scene like really really deep dive into the canadian and so like i actually have started curating like a a um a a one of the playlists this year is going to be a a really hardcore canada only deep dive on on on, yeah 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 so the the that i'm just gonna plug it real quick way tacky but it's called um the playlist is called hidden gems and it's basically so like i'll just grab like you know everyone anyone who's in like an east coast punk band Boom, done. I don't yep. care how big you are, unsigned, signed, whatever. Like, boom, you you tell me what's up, you're on. And yeah. so, like, you know, it, it's tough because the reason why I end up dragging behind is because, like, some of these playlists will end up being, like, you know, like 150 bands, you know, which doesn't seem like a lot, you know, because you're just, like, clicking. But, like, you do have to go to 150 band pages, and I do pick, like, the song that I think is the coolest of the of – the, so, like, you know, yeah, I might, like, sit there and listen to, like, you know – 10 dope songs from a band and be like, Oh, you know? So anyway, yeah. But like the hearing about Chris's experience, uh, in the Canadian punk scene was really cool. Um, I love that stuff. I love like, I love how it with music, like how regional or local it can get. And, like, everyone – it's so funny. Like, everyone uses, like, the local term like it's, like, a bad thing. You know, like, oh, well, you're, you're a local band or you're a local loser. You know, and, like, we're all we're all chasing that, um, you know, sort of big big break or big moment as artists. You know, like, oh, we're going to make it, you know. But um, as I have learned, um, everyone is still pooping in bags uh, with cologne sprayed over top. So there's no <laughs> – there, there's no glamour 
Okay. So yeah. like, nope, uh-uh, nope. Everyone poops in bags. Not nothing, nothing exciting. So, um, it's just interesting that like, you know, like the Calgary scene is different than the, 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 you know, Quebec scene, which is different than the, um, you know, uh, Ontario scene. And then like, you know, Newfoundland's got its own whole thing going on, you know, which is, you know, I'm obsessed with Newfoundland, by the way. I think yep. it's like, oh, yeah. It's I pretty move, close to you, too, man. I would move to St. John's like that. I mean, like, I would, like, no sweat. Nice people. I love, I've been there once or twice. Yeah. And, uh, I was, I was screeched in, and so I'm, like, a member of their, like, tribe squad thing now. And uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's awesome. It's awesome. I did not have any SEAL poutine while I was there, although I, I went for it. They were sold out. Um, I got snowed in there. It was wild. And Oh, uh, you went out of the winter. Yeah, yeah. I had to People go there. Don't do that. For, I had to go there for my day job, and it was it was no joke, dude. I mean, like, it was no joke. I, like, I was stuck there an extra two days. My liver hurt by the end of it. <laughs> like, because it was just, like, it was just, like, dark. And snow, and all you could do is drink and eat like the most delicious but like hearty food ever. And I felt like singing sea shanties by the time I was done, and like you know, it was a good time. Yeah, it's it's one of those places that they say that people are very friendly. Like you just walk down the street and people are like, "Come on into my house, have no, a it's, drink." It's, it's amazing. Like, it's amazing. It's like dangerous, but it's good. <laughs> no, it's really cool. And actually, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this uh, for trivia night buffs out there. Um, that is the hardest game of trivia I've ever played in my entire life. Why, why is that? Okay. All right. True story. So, yeah. hey, do, do you play a lot of trivia? You no, not, not really. Not really. But I have a feeling I know where you're going with it. All right. So, have I told you this story before? No. That it is already? Okay. No. <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing worse than like just like rehashing like the same thing you did on the last episode it's like yeah no, with, like no, fresh never, fresh shit for your show that. but but so like so i'm 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 there with my buddy jesper yes jesper is um is swedish and the reason why i bring that up is not to like give some like you know differentiator between him and myself other than the fact that like in my opinion he's had a much more well-rounded education uh than i have as the american okay so that's 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 where this needs to live okay so already off the bat i kind of feel like i'm kind of coming in a, a little outclassed at the trivia night okay so you know in in the states like i'm doing pretty well i've got a college degree i'm feeling fresh you know like i'm all right i got this i'm a person of the world in, in in Canada, I will say you guys have tougher trivia nights. It's okay. fine. It's fine. You know what? Hey, whatever. Whatever. Um, St. John's, Newfoundland. They. I'll hit you with the question. I'll give it to you. Here okay. was the question. The question was the host on a screen projector would flash a painting. The painting was a portrait of an artist in the style of the artist, but done by another artist. So let me hit you with what that means. Yeah, just wrap your mind because it took – yeah. I think I think this is actually one where I actually asked the question like in public and was like shamed. I was like, you know, but like – so it's like, you know, it's a portrait of like Vincent Van Gogh, right? And it's done in the style of Vincent Van Gogh, but Vincent Van Gogh didn't didn't paint it. Somebody else painted it. It's another famous painter painted it, yeah. right? And so you had to name who the painter was that painted the painting. That's insane. Here's where it really hurt my feelings. There were a lot of people that got that question like right. And I'm talking like and it wasn't just like one painting. It was like there were like 10 paintings on this stupid question. And like that that's just like a that's like a little just like a little test of like this trivia night. And and I mean it was so bad. I don't know I, I don't think I even got a question right until like the back half of the I mean we were in dead last. I mean like like 
well, I'm talking like we weren't even in the parking lot of the of the stadium with these people. And these people are just like cranking this trivia. And and me and my buddy and my buddy Jesper, my buddy Jesper, who again, a, a person of the world, like someone who receives an A class, you know, education. Yep. And this guy is just going like, oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, I got nothing. I, I'm just like, I, I had nothing. I mean, it it really blew my stack, man. I, I I've never. I'm sure the uh the accents out there too made it a little tougher too to understand because I'll, I'll tell you, it's off the rails sometimes. They they I mean like I definitely learned some new some some newfie while I was up there. I mean, but these people were speaking plain English, and I was just oh. I was it was there was not a language issue going on. There was just an uh, I'm not as smart as them issue going on, and <laughs> they they crushed me. And I was humbled, and um, I, I gained a lot of respect for that part of your country that night. I was like, whoa, <laughs> you guys know how to do three things. Drink me under the table, yeah. uh, crush it at trivia, and uh, crush me at trivia while you're drinking me under the table. And that was just incredible. I mean, like, it was, <laughs> it was amazing, man. I could – I would like that. I would move there in a heartbeat. Plus, I watched Gremlins in French, which was way cool because it was that <laughs> part of the year. It was like December. Yeah. I was like watching watching little gremlins in in French and then getting spanked uh spanked uh way hard in trivia night. Do do you speak uh can you speak French? N- um no. Um not at all. Um but I do love I do love a little adventure. So, you know, I try I dabble. I do have a fluency in Spanish. Okay. I am bi- I am bilingual. I do speak Spanish fluently. Um I think my I think my next language is French. Um I think um, as people of North America, we, we should strive to speak the languages of our of our land, yep. you know, and kind of being in that sort of middle middle brother, uh, you know, kind of country there. That's the states where we have our, our brothers and sisters above us who who speak, you know, French and, and speak um you know, English and our, our brothers and sisters to the south that speak English and speak Spanish. Um we as Americans owe it to really no one other than ourselves to just um, become more uh, more present uh, yeah. in in the dialogue. And and it's starting to change here quite a bit, actually. It's starting to really change here quite a bit. Um, there's always been a lot of resistance to it uh, in in the states, but um, it's it's starting to change. Fortunately, fortunately. I got like a, a grade eight education in French, man. That's hey, that's, man. Not, that's what I hey. maxed out, but it, hey. it, it's something. The, the, what's wrong with that? That's great, man. It's, it's that's something. great. It's a baseline. That's a baseline. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure the the important, I'm sure the important matters can be tended to. You know, yeah. which, you know, I mean, when you know, as people, isn't that what we're really striving for anyway? You know, I mean, just yeah. like, hey, look, where's the bathroom? Don't yeah. touch me. You know, uh, food, you know, like these are, these are, yeah. Now that I'm getting older though, I'm realizing like, I want to know this stuff, you know, like I was, uh, yeah. I was in a, in a tour van with, uh, my buddies from Montreal. Um, and, uh, they were crashing on my couch. So they were like, we we're, we we're driving it back to my place after, after the show. And these guys are all speaking French to each other. And, and yeah. I was I had no idea what he was, what they were talking about. And they're looking at me like thinking I know. And I'm like, hey, guys, we're going to have to get this back down to English here for me because uh, I can't keep up. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I So that's that's happened to me a few times in Mexico, because even though I have a fluency, like there's like. Forget how many dialects there are in Spanish, but it's like, you know, and that's something I think a lot a lot of people don't get is that, like you can learn a language. Um, that doesn't mean that every place in the world speaks the same words the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just just like how, you know, French in Canada is actually different than French that is in France, uh, which is also different than some Fr- French that's spoken in parts of Asia as well. Um, so, you know, there, there's there's um, I'm always surprised by how how much larger and smaller simultaneously the world is all all at once, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and so I, a few times in Mexico, I I've just gotten totally lost because the they don't they don't teach um, 
in the states they they do not teach spanish in my opinion in a way that is beneficial to the citizenry of the united states you know yeah. it's it's taught in textbooks it's taught in this arcane sort of way it's it's rooted predominantly in spain um it's not correct at all uh, i mean there, there's an entire tense in Spain Spanish um, that is not used in the majority of the dialects of Spanish. And yeah. so it, it's, you know, whatever. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> and there you go. And that's, and that's good. That's some good radio right there, whatever we call this. That's some good cast. Yeah. There you go. Well, and well, now yeah. the weather, you know, so it's, you know. Well, Neil, um, yeah. I appreciate you coming on the podcast, man. It's, it's honestly always a pleasure, dude. Like, I, I like to chop it up with you, man. Um, anything that you want to, like, where can people find uh, the podcast? Like, sure. You said it's on different uh, different places, but where can people find uh, your show? So the easiest place that people can go to anytime is you can always go to CrashTourShow.com. Okay. Um, all of our socials are backslash crash tour show. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, uh, we're not on TikTok yet, but I've got a, I've got an angle. I've got an angle for TikTok. We're going to do it. Um, and, uh, what else? Um, we're also on, we're on Apple, we're on Apple podcasts, we're on Spotify, um, any, anywhere that you get your, your casting type things done. And then the video stuff, which is going to come out later, will be on our YouTube channel, which is also backslash Crash Tour Show. Beautiful. Beautiful. And they'll be rolling out quite a bit in the next little bit, I guess, eh? Yeah, yeah. So it's a weekly show. We've, we're about 20 episodes in. So, you know, heavy editing uh, happening right now. But um, second episode is about to go up and uh, 18 more to go. And then we'll keep uh, keep on trucking. Perfect. All right, Neil. Well, I appreciate it, brother. I hope you stay safe out there, and I hope uh, Pat has that speedy recovery, man. Yeah. You, uh, you have a good one, all right, brother? You too, man. Hey, also, um, you know, I hope to see you in person one day. We we will. Um, I'm going to do a U.S. I got to go to the U.S. I got to go through the U.S. Come on, man. You know, Come on down. The water is great. People in, there's people in, like, every state now that I really want to meet, and uh, – I mean, you're definitely you're definitely my my Baltimore guy. So, Come on in. Come yeah. on in, man. I'll, yeah. we, we will show you. We will show you such a great time in Baltimore. It'll be it'll be the, the, the tops. Um, and um, uh, yeah, you'll 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 quickly find out that America should definitely be like four different countries. I don't I don't understand why we're still together. It's fine. We'll get uh, there. We'll figure it out. Beers at that sushi restaurant. Oh, yeah. I actually that guy got arrested for drug dealing. So that's not around anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we'll take you to another one that's just as well and, and is not full of ecstasy. So. <laughs> All right, man, I'll talk to you later. You take. All care, right, man. man. Take it easy, buddy. Good to see you. Buns, check. Hot dogs, mustard, check. Ketchup. Hot stuff. Mm, nah. Where's the hot stuff? I, I didn't bring it. So good with the hot stuff? Very good with the hot stuff.